quick reaction to uh, Anthony Flew, There is a God. Uh, this guy was a major uh, atheist for many, many years, and this book was written in 2007. He died in 2010, but this is kind of an amazing turnaround. Now, he didn't come all the way and become a a, a full-fledged uh, personal God, Christian type person, but he became a deist. I just want to share with you just a handful of bits here, just to give you an idea. So over here on page 75, he was asked in a symposium what he thinks about the recent work on the origin of life, to that point to the activity of a creative intelligence. And he said, yes, I now think it does, almost entirely because of the DNA investigations. What I think the DNA material has done is that it has shown by the almost unbelievable complexity of the arrangements which are needed to produce life, that intelligence must have been involved in getting these extraordinarily diverse elements to work together. Yeah, on the same next page or two, he talks about the debunking of the monkey theorem. The monkey theorem is the idea that if you get, you know, a, a group of monkeys together and you give them infinite time and they, you put them in a room with a typewriter, they can, they can type out, you know, like the, all the works of Shakespeare. Just giving you some of the highlights here out of the book. Then I'll tell you what I think about maybe whether you should get the book or not. Uh, he's talking about a fellow named Schroeder. Uh, Schroeder first referred to an experiment conducted by the British National Council of Arts. A computer was placed in a cage with six monkeys. This actually happened. After one month of hammering away at it, as well as using it as a bathroom, the monkeys produced 50 typed pages, but not a single word. Schroeder noted that this was the case, even though the shortest word in the English language is one letter, an I, A or an I. A, a is a word if, only if there's a space on either side of it. If we take that the keyboard had 30 characters, the 26 letters and other symbols, then the likelihood of getting a one letter word is 30 times 30 times 30, which is 27,000. Schroeder then applied the probabilities to the sonnet analogy. What is the chance of getting a Shakespearean sonnet, he asked. He continued, quote, all the sonnets are the same length. They are, by definition, 14 lines long. I picked one I knew the opening line for. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? I counted the number of letters. There are 488 letters in that sonnet. What's the likelihood of hammering away and getting 488 letters in the exact sequence, as in, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? What you end up with is 26 multiplied by itself 488 times, which is 26 to the 488th power. Or in other words, it is base 10, 10 to the 690th. Now the number of particles in the universe, not grains of sand, particles, uh, protons, electrons, and neutrons is 10 to the 80th power. 10 to the 80th is one with 80 zeros after it. 10 to the 690th is, is one with 690 zeros after it. There are not enough particles in the universe to write down the trials. You'd, better, you'd be off by a factor of 10 to the 600th. If you took the entire universe and converted it to computer chips, forget the monkeys. Each one weighing a millionth of a gram and had each computer chip able to spin out 488 trials at, say, a million times a second. If you turn the entire universe into these computer chips, microcomputer chips, and these chips were spinning them a million times a second, producing random letters, the number of trials you would get since the beginning of time would be 10 to the 90th trials. It would be off again by a factor of 10 to the 600th. You will never get a sonnet by chance. The universe would have to be 10 to the 600th times larger, yet the world just thinks that monkeys can do it every time. He says this is a, a brilliant debunking of the monkey theorem. Okay, here's what he says on page 91. The leaders of science over the last hundred years, along with some of today's most influential scientists, have built a philosophically compelling vision of a rational universe that sprang from a divine mind. <laughs> this is a former atheist. Uh, I mean, you know, a real serious type atheist. And so he says that science has built the vision. Science has sort of kind of like smashed itself. Flew quotes from Paul Davies, and here's what he says. Science is based on the assumption that the universe is thoroughly rational and logical at all levels, writes Paul Davies, arguably the most influential contemporary expositor of modern science. Atheists claim that the laws of nature exist reasonlessly and that the universe is ultimately absurd. As a scientist, I find this hard to accept. There must be an unchanging rational ground in which the logical orderly nature of the universe is rooted. And so... <laughs> I'm going to finish here with just uh, an excerpt from page 113 to 114, kind of an analogy that Flu gives uh, here and straight to it. Imagine entering a hotel room on your next vacation. The CD player is on the bedside table, is softly playing a track from your favorite recording. The framed print over the bed is identical to the image that hangs over the fireplace at home. The room is scented with your favorite fragrance. You shake your head in amazement and drop your bags on the floor. You're suddenly very alert. You step over to the mini bar, open the door, and stare in wonder at the contents. Your favorite beverages, your favorite cookies and candy, even the brand bottled 
of bottled water that you prefer. You turn from the mini bar then and gaze around the room. You notice the book on the desk. It's the latest volume by your favorite author. You glance into the bathroom where personal care and grooming products are lined up on the counter, each one as if it was chosen specifically for you. You switch on the television. It's tuned to your favorite channel. Chances are with each new discovery about your hospitable new environment, you would be less inclined to think it was all a mere coincidence, right? You might wonder how the hotel managers acquired such detailed information about you. You might marvel at their meticulous preparation. You might even double check what all this is going to cost. Uh, but you would certainly be inclined to believe that someone knew you were coming. And it's interesting business. No, uh, maybe he did become a Christian after he wrote the book. I don't know. But interesting business, uh, a atheist here who turned around after a, a career of uh, being an atheist and, and speaking and debunking and uh, Christianity, and he turned around and although he doesn't completely go to the Christian line here, he believes that the, that the universe was created by an intelligent mind. Ha, huh. interesting business. Now, should you buy the book? Well, it's uh, 218 or 220 or so pages. Um, interesting reading to me, and if you're deep in apologetics, you might like it, it might be useful to you. I don't know if, if every average person would really want it. Uh, now, here's a book, and I'll, I'll probably do a video on this one of these days. Uh, Eric Metaxas is, is, uh, is Atheism Dead? Now, that's a book you're going to want to read, but I'll, I'll talk about that at another, at another time. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to share this with you. Very interesting. Science. Science has dug its own grave, says Anthony Flew, uh, more or less. So anyway, a little reaction to this book. There is a God. No crossed out. There is a God. Interesting business, and God is on his throne.